On Abrasive and Proud of It Live, we're going to be talking about drum sander wraps, rolls, and bulk rolls. What's the deal with all these wraps? Covering our cut-to-fit pre-cut wraps for our popular drum sanders, standard 3-inch by 18-meter rolls that fit most drum sanders efficiently, and marked-to-cut bulk rolls for popular drum sanders of the 2000s. We will cover how to get the most out of your drum sander, how to clean the wraps, and how to make sure you get the most bang for your buck with our Tip Tip Tuesday. And ladies and gentlemen, Chris Smith. Well, welcome. As you can see, I don't have a lot on the counter today. It's because we're going to be pretty specific. And if you look through our catalog, we've got two plus pages of nothing but rolls for drum sander. So we thought we'd break it down a little for you, give you some details on the materials, the roll options, and uh, maybe answer a few questions if you got any along the way. So as you can see, we've got our ready to uh, pre-cut, ready to go rolls. These are our most common. And uh, we sell a lot of these because some people really, they're either too lazy to cut them themselves or they don't care. They just want it. They're just, they're all about speed. Then we've also got the bulk rolls in an 18 meter and a 50, as well as these pre-marked rolls for a variety of different sanders where you just cut them based on the mark on the back of the thing. So let's take a look. So as you can see, these are quite handy uh, for folks who have a different sanders or maybe they just want or they just want to be able to cut their own and save. Um, these bulk rolls do pretty well. And on the back, they are marked for a variety of different sanders and, and they are listed here, the, the different sander options and the different sizes and uh, how many wraps you'll get per roll. So the box gives you a lot of literature. And again, the back of it is marked so you can clearly see which sander is yours. It's kind of color coded. Um, then these bulk rolls here, we've got it in the 18 meter as well as the 50 meter. And you can see there's a significant difference there. Um, with both of these, they are offered in not only the aluminum oxide, which you know you can find about anywhere, but we also offer it in our zirconium material. So if you're getting that, that hard to remove material or you need to be more aggressive, uh, this aluminum zirconia goes all the way down to 24 grit and is quite helpful for a lot of applications. If you're doing metal on your drum sander, this is a must have. Uh, the blue zirconia holds up better to, to the, the heat and actually produces a nice scratch pattern on there. Then when you get to a certain grit, you can swap back over. So a lot of options, a lot of variety, and at Clean Sports Woodworking Shop, we pretty much have every grit covered uh, from 24 all the way up to about what you'd ever want to use. What's all up, right. Gary? Mr. Gary Jones, hey boys, hope you're doing okay, Chris. And as you can see, just to kind of cover a little bit, the pre-cut rolls, as the name implies, they're already cut with that angle that you're looking for, and that makes it very handy. Uh, so you just literally grab one out of the box, take it over your machine, and you replace your old one with that. Um, that makes your life very simple, very easy. Now, the cool thing is if you've got one of these old wraps that you just removed from your machine, you can take that, use it as a template on these bulk rolls, which would allow you then to cut up uh, more wraps on the bulk roll than what you'd get in the box. And Mike's got some information to break down that price per box per roll scenario, which after you see may make you change your mind and want to start getting into these bulk rolls. So out of all the options that we have, you have the ready to cut. And let's say, is there, there's not a 1938 marked on there. So what's a 22 inch on the marked to cut or ready to cut rolls? 14. Okay, so you get 14 wraps out of that one. Uh, if you were to take a look at the 50 meter, for instance, you'll get 15 wraps if you do it yourself as far as the taper goes. And then on the 3 by 18 meter rolls, you'll get 5 wraps. So what that boils down to is that if you wanted anything that's basically, let's say 80 grit, um, you know, so you're going to get out of the 22, for instance, that we're talking about, you get 5 wraps for 37.95. Where on the 50 meter, you'll get 15 wraps for $89.95. So if you're going to be doing a lot with the drum sander, it's a great option to go ahead and buy the bigger roll to get more for more bang for your buck. Now, when we're talking about the cut to fit wraps, for instance, if we were to do a three by 18 bulk where you cut it yourself on the taper, on a 2244, or sorry, on a 1938 here, I have $6.33 a wrap. So you're going to get six wraps out of one bulk roll, three by 18 meter. And then if you were to buy the cut to fit, 
you're only going to get three roll or three wraps out of that for twenty seven ninety five. So for convenience sake, you you can get the cut to fit, so it fits every time. Or if you have a new machine and you don't have an old wrap to have an existing template, this is a great way to get an existing template. Um, but anytime that you can get the bulk and cut it yourself, and you can cut the whole roll up in one shot if you want to, and make your own you know cut to fit wraps. But this is really where you start saving the money when it comes down to drum sanders. Yeah, it's quite the savings. And and we realize that a lot of people, it might be either intimidating or probably just time consuming uh, to think about going from something pre-cut to something that's bulk. But really, if you weigh it out, I mean, the, the graph you just showed going from this to this, you save three dollars a wrap. I mean, that's a pretty significant savings. And if you start equating that over, you know, how many come in a wrap three? You know, you do that times three. I mean, you're you're looking at some money over the period of time, and you can cut up one whole uh, bulk roll and have that still rubber banded or nestled away and ready to be put on. So you're not going to be down, and it doesn't take that long to cut them. You can even make yourself a wooden template uh, to lay out that's out of that angle, and then have a setup on your shop floor that uh, measured out accordingly. So there's a lot of ways to do it, and so we always try to encourage people to go bulk just simply because it is such a savings in the long run. Absolutely. And then a lot of places uh, you'll see online have, um, you know, Supermax or Jet. They're all cling spore abrasives inside the box if they're labeled by those manufacturers. Cling spore abrasives has been supplying the drum sander wraps for years, mm -hmm. decades now at this point. And so therefore, if you're used to that quality, you'll have that consistently. But you can also get it from cling spores woodworking shop at a fraction of the price. Um, also, if you have a 2244 jet oscillating sander, uh, we do stock the three and an eighth inch by 18 meter rolls. Um, you can also special order the other grits that we don't stock, but 60, 80, 100, 120, all the way up to 220, we have for that machine, as well as maybe you have the old Delta 1836 and you need the two inch wraps for that. We have both the 45 meter roll, which gives you about 25, or sorry, 12 wraps out of a roll, or the pre-cut, which you'll get four wraps in a box. So again, looking at the savings here, you get 12 wraps, so three times more for just a little bit more over double the price. That's a savings that I could get behind. Yeah, for sure. And, and it just makes sense. And again, if you're not sure what's right for you, you can always call us and ask. We'll help you dial that in and get the right grit uh, for your, your material, help you get the right grit sequence based on your application. And of course, the right materials are conia versus aluminum oxide, um, because that's important. You know, we don't just sell a roll and that's it. We offer a lot of options, a lot of variety. And even for some of you who may be looking at this and say, well, you know what, my machine doesn't take any of those rolls. My machine takes um, hook and loop or my machine takes adhesive. Um, we've got rolls that are set up for that. The main difference though is these rolls, especially the standard bulk roll, the three by 18, we've gotten com com people commenting before, well, that 18 is sort of an odd random number. And it is, but 18 meters is what we found gives you the most yield out of a roll for your standard wraps without having a lot of waste left over. That's why it's not something different. Because if you look at our other rolls, we sell them in 10 or 25 or 50. Um, so this is 18 meters for a reason, which is to give you the best bang for your buck. It is the way we work. Now, um, but we offer, go ahead. I'm sorry, Do does anyone else offer an 18 meter roll? Not that I know of. If they do, they probably got it from us. <laughs> Very good, go ahead. Um, but ultimately, if you're looking for something different, uh, like if you've got one of these uh, wood techs or grizzlies that use the hook and loop, we certainly have those rolls ready to go as well. Uh, they're in our catalog as well as online. If you've got questions about which one's right for you, again, call us and we'll be happy to help. Um, PSA, we have those available as well, but to be honest, we really, we strongly recommend you do not use PSA and, and in reality, the hook and loop on, on a, a drum sander like that. Some of the smaller drum sanders, the little uh, top where you run your piece across the top of it, that's, that's fine. It's not building up so much pressure. Um, the problem we run into, especially with those two backings, the hook and loop and the PSA, is the hook and loop offers a cushion. So as that drum is rotating, your material is kind of just sort of floating on top. Well, when you pass material under it, 
it, the drum is compressing that roll or that wrap on top of your material. And what it does is it sort of squishes it and it can create all kinds of issues from it folding over, uh, creasing, uh, uh, getting overlapped. So there's a lot of concerns there. Plus the heat buildup can damage the hooks on the hook material that's on the drum. That's why a lot of those companies, they'll offer replacement hook material to replace what's on the drum. And we have that here as well. If you're looking to do that, um, we've had a lot of people try to convert their drums over to that. But we recommend sort of steering clear of that if you can. Uh, the biggest culprit's the PSA because all you're doing when you run that that drum or that material under that drum, you're building up heat and that glue becomes slippery and it can actually slide around. And that's the last thing you want your roll to do while you're trying to sand your product flat. All right, so here's a question we get often. If you are using the drum sander, is it better to have the wraps touching each other as you go around the drum, or is it better to leave a gap? We always recommend leaving at least a 16th inch gap. What you'll find is uh, that gives you room for airflow. Uh, also, it gives a little more room for dust collection and waste material to be evacuated through the dust collection system. Um, and it helps prevent, if you didn't get a good tight wrap as you went, um, it gives you a little bit of a buffer so that once you start that machine and the first contact with your workpiece, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of overlap. And that's a heavy tendency. Uh, and we get a lot, of a lot of people commenting and, and asking questions about why am I getting this mark or that mark or why is my rolls doing this? A lot of times just creating that gap helps solve that problem. Yep, so it allows it to slide around a little bit and give it some some area to move as well as dust control and a little bit of airflow. Yeah. Um, so with if you have an existing drum sander and you're thinking about switching over to hook and loop, our recommendation is to not do it. Okay, because it all comes down to the PSA. The, the black mm -hmm. hook material is stuck on the drum by PSA. It's pressure sensitive adhesive, so therefore you'll have that issue. Um, but yeah, we get those questions a lot as far as I'd like to, it, it sounds good in theory here. Hold on a second. Yeah. Talk to you. Not there sure you are. Welcome yeah. back. But it sounds good in theory. And we agree with that theory that yes, that would be more convenient. You just wrap it on there. The thing that we have found is that you, you get a lot more issues, not only for what Chris was mentioning as far as the cushion, and then you're pressing it into it. You'll melt the hooks, causing you to have to change out the hooks. Uh, the other thing that you'll run into is that a lot of the wraps will break. And since they're on a hook style, you don't know it right away. So then you start getting these funny marks in your in your workpiece. Due to the fact you have uh, abrasives that are kind of peeled over or tucked underneath and they're making a high spot. So it starts to cause a little bit more issues that you're not going to see right away until later. When um, a wrap on a, a standard wrap on a drum, when it breaks, it breaks. You know it right away and you can kind of assess the situation. But on a hook and loop, you'll get a lot more issues before you know that there's an issue. And then you don't know exactly where in your work process. If you're like running a lot of cutting boards, for instance, you'll notice that as you go to put uh, your oil on, all of a sudden there's these funny kind of lines in it. And that's usually what it's caused by if you're using hook and loop. Yeah. And the other, the other concern is, you know, traditional drum sanders, they've got the spring clips on either end that are designed to lock and pull the, to keep your wrap tight. If you're just using Velcro, you've got to come up with other, some other solution to keep your ends from unraveling um, because that's a common issue. And I've seen people use rubber bands and duct tape and electrical tape and other means. But to me, that becomes a lot more cumbersome than just sticking with the two clips that come in your sander. Absolutely. So in, in regards to we offer two products, we have the aluminum oxide and the aluminum zirconia. What becomes the price difference in the two? Chris, can you tell me where the benefits would be for aluminum zirconia before I go over the prices? Sure. I mean, your aluminum zirconia definitely is going to be um, more prominent if you're doing metal applications um, or if you're doing real aggressive applications. Uh, you'll find th the zirconia will, will give you better performance in those two arenas. Um, but just standard woodworking applications, if you're just trying to uh, sand off some glue lines or, or glue up joints, um, you can certainly get away with a 60 grit aluminum oxide and you'll be very happy with the results. But you got to go much more aggressive than that. Where you're doing metal, go with the blue zirconia. So what we have is um, our prices here are basically, you know, if you're going to do 80 grit and up, which is what a lot of people do for the most part, you're 37.95 on a three by 18 meter roll. But if you jump over to aluminum zirconia, 
it goes up to 51 roughly a roll and you will get more longevity out of that but you'll also get a much more aggressive scratch out of it so if you have to do some heavy stock removal you know like the 24 36 grit range um, it will definitely remove some material in a hurry but just be warned that if you're going to do that that you really should follow it up maybe with an aluminum oxide because that'll make the end process that much cleaner overall when you're done yeah for sure and we've got a lot of other accessories in this sort of arena that we offer for the drum sander we do offer a variety of different uh, conveyor belts both a premium and an economy and a must-have tool in every shop the belt cleaning stick uh, i know these are traditionally made for belts uh, but the nice thing about a drum sander is you can pop that hood and safely and carefully wipe that across the surface and that will certainly clean any debris out of the that might be loaded into that material. Uh, and then we also offer other, a variety of options in this belt cleaning option, whether it be the smaller block or the bigger block. But nonetheless, this is a great add-on that uh, is very handy to have around the shop because this can be used for your portable belts and other machines that use abrasives to help uh, unload and clean up uh, those as you use them. So let me ask this real quick, because we have a lot of questions or people that make statements that say, well, I just use the bottom of a shoe. What are the downsides of using a shoe versus a pure rubber block? Well, one, you, you, it'd be hard to use that shoe to wear on your foot after that. Uh, but two, really, it's a different kind of rubber. Um, back in the day, the, the soles of shoes were made out of, out of a proper rubber. But nowadays, it's a synthetic and it's got some other things in it. It doesn't work quite like this does. Um, this is actually a very soft, pliable product. Um, and it will harden and dry as the oils evaporate. But the nice thing is this actually will function the way it's intended. The bottom of your shoe, it, it, it's probably not going to work like you hope it will. And then you've ruined your shoe and you got to go buy new. And it, it's just a world of mess. Just spend the money, get this block, and you won't have to worry about your shoe. And where else are you going to find shoes that are $12.95 and do hundreds and hundreds of belts? At Clean Spores Woodworking Shop, you can strap this to your foot and this can be your shoe. Then I would say, yes, use this rubber off the bottom of your shoe to clean out your joints. Ah, dad jokes. Yeah. The other thing is I found is that uh, with shoes in general, um, depending on the quality of the rubber, that they can actually heat up and start to stick to the belt or the wrap in this case, making it worse to where now you have rubber that's been embedded into it. So um, be cautious if you're trying to do that, trying to save money. Really, the belt cleaning stick for $12.95 is the way to go. And if you buy two of them, um, there isn't a deal, but the second one will harden over time, making it last twice as long. And that's something you won't find anywhere else. Well, there you go. You got me all excited thinking you had a special nope. price when you buy two just to find out that, well, you know what? I could give you, you a better special price. Giving a special price would work, but at the same time, if you can find out that you can get twice to maybe four times longer use out of the second block once you go through the first block, that's well worth it right there to me. Yeah, so if this one lasts you three years, then the other one would last you six. So that's that's worth the money. Good investment. Absolutely. So any other questions that you run into, Chris, before we go? Oh, we get so many. I don't, I don't have a notepad in front of me or a screen, but... Um, you know, I know when it comes to drum sanders, we do get a lot of questions on the wraps, the rolls, the grit sequencing, and things like that. So, I mean, you know, ideally, just like with other abrasives, you don't want to go any more coarse than you have to, because then you've got to come back and remove those lines. And if you have a single head drum sander, that makes it real difficult, because then you're pulling a wrap, putting on another, running all your parts, pulling a wrap, putting on another, and then you realize one of your parts has a blemish and you've got to recut it on the saw, then you're back to the drum sander, so you have to pull everything off and start from scratch. We've all been there. So ideally, especially on a single head machine, if you can find that grit that gives you that good first sand where it levels everything off and gives you a good starting point, usually that's going to be right around 100 for most folks because then you can hit that with a 150, or 180 and you're good to go. Some people, if you've got a two-headed machine, you might do 100 and 150, and then you, you've got, you come behind that with an orbital to clean that up. Um, in woodworking, <clears throat> there's a common misconception, and we get this question a lot, why have I still got lines after using 220 grit on my drum sander? 
Drum sanders in most cases for wood aren't designed to be a finishing stage pro process. The main reason is one, they all use metal drums. That metal drum is essentially embedding that grain as it comes through into the wood. So you're gonna get those straight grain lines after a pass. So that's why we always recommend go to right at the grit before you wanna end, pass it through on that. So if it's 150 is where you're gonna stop, then you just maybe use 120 then hit or 100 and then you can hit it with a 150 orbital to clean up the scratches and everything's going to look clean and going to look good. So just keep that in mind. A lot of it has to do with process and some of it has to do with how much you're removing. All right. And then if you're on a double headed machine, like a 25 by two, 37 by two, um, what is a good two grits to get for someone? Just common woodworking. What's, what's good. What are two good grits to get? Well, usually if you're in a two head machine, you've got a process that you want to go through, whether it be uh, leveling up glued up boards, whether it be like a, a cutting board or whether you're making doors or panels. So generally the people who have the two headed machines, they're working a process. So most of the time I would either do 100, 150, or if they're trying to clean up heavy glue joints, maybe an 80, 120, and then those two grits will prepare you for the, the orbital or the handwork after. And it, it does make the handwork much more minimal than trying to do all of that with an orbital, uh, especially when you've hit it with the 80 to get it all nice and flat and level. And then you come that come behind that with the 150 all on the same machine. Uh, that really, or excuse me, the 120 that helps you really clean that up quite a bit. So however your sequence is, skip that grit, um, whether it's 80, 120 or 100 and 150, it does make the last end of that. If you wanted to stop at a 180, you can still do that either way and have a nice, clean, good-looking workpiece. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions Almost and stuff like that. smooth as my head. Well, I'm glad you fit that in there at the end of the day. All right. So if you have any questions, please uh, you know, comment below. Let us know, and we'll get to them. We'll answer them as we, as we go throughout the day. Uh, if you see this later on, not a problem. But don't forget to join us. Coming up in April, we're going to be switching this up to Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Every day is going to be something different, but basically it's a tech tip. Tuesday, Thursdays, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Um, but if you have any questions, again, throw them down there. You can always call us at 800-228-0000, woodworkingshop.com. Or if you have an email and you have pictures that you need to send us about an issue you may have, that's what we're here for. We're the technicians for Kling Spores Woodworking Shop. We're here to help you with any woodworking issues you may have, especially with abrasives. You can send those over to sales at woodworkingshop.com, and they'll forward them over to us, and we'll be able to take care of it for you. For sure. Absolutely. So thank you for watching. Brace I'm proud of it live. Tech Tip Tuesday. I'm Mike Z. I'm Chris, and I guess it's a wrap.